Welcome to part three of Swift Basics. Let's talk about enums. Enums in Swift are first class types. There's a lot of capability. You have force values, you can have functions. They can be fairly complex. At this point, let's keep it very simple. The first enum shown has four points of the compass. You notice the use of the keyword case. The second enum is the equivalent of the first one. It's just a simpler way of expressing it. Now I have a variable called direction, which is equal to direction.north. And the type of that variable is direction, let's assume it. I can change that direction by simply using the simpler notation, in this case, dot .east. We have the same enum again, this time a case switch is shown. And what I'd like to point out is that no, there is no default. The case switch is complete and a default is not required. Let's switch gears. I want to cover literals, I want to cover tuples, and optionals. Now, numeric literals. Leading zero is fine. You can separate large numbers with an underscore, for example, 200,000. Uppercase and lowercase e is fine for scientific notation. Zero x is octal. 0 o, I'm sorry, 0 x is hexadecimal, 0 o is octal, and 0 b is binary. Now we've got the notion of tuples. This takes a little bit to get your head around. It's a set of values, and you sort of can view it as a lightweight structure. In this case, we have the notion of an asset, which has a name and it also has a value. It's a house worth $200,000. Now the type of that tuple is a string and an int. Now, if we want to take that tuple and we want to extract out the variables, in other words, we want to place those values from asset into type and value, you would define the tuple type value, in this case set it equal to asset. So print the values here. If I only want to extract one value out of the tuple, I can use the underscore in this case to ignore the first value. I just get back value two. Tuples are very useful when a function wants to return two values as opposed to one, or three values, so on and so forth. It's also the case when you want to pass them around. Optionals. An optional is a variable that may not have a value. If it doesn't have a value, it is nil. And optionals are the only case where nil is used in Swift. These two statements, the first two for num and num2, are equivalent. Okay, just simply declaring a num2 with int as an optional, it will be nil. Now, whenever you are given an optional or have an optional, you should test for nil before you attempt to use that optional. There's a couple examples here where the function is called before it's initialized and then the case where num is initialized and then it's called. In the case towards the bottom here, I'm using the invocation of an int and I'm giving it a string forgot to put the O in, so I get hell instead of hello. This string cannot be converted to an int. 
Now int does, instantiation of int, does return an optional. Okay, and this is the case where, this is one of the cases where you should actually test. Okay, we're done with part three. Move on to part four.